Hi everyone, Materium here again with another Brawler's Bash prep game with my Ogre Kingdoms facing off against Michael's Dwarves in a 3,000 point battle that's going to use one of the scenarios that will be present at Brawler's Bash. So for the most part, this is a normal battle line scenario. The one difference is this thing in the middle of the board. It is our Leprechaun, as you can see marked by the Slayer on top of the building. Uh, Basically, the way it works is at the end of each turn, <clears throat> any unit within six inches of this building, which is our Leprechaun, is going to have final transformation, a uh, transmutation from the Lore of Metal cast upon them. Uh, and any unit that's within that area that has fortitude in it at the end of the turn gives you an automatic 100 victory points so there's a lot of victory point potential there to, to be worth the risk and at the end of the game whoever has the largest unit by model count within six inches of there gets an additional 300 points so this is one scenario we really weren't sure how to deal with so we wanted to make sure we played it beforehand and uh, I don't know if we ended up playing it or dealing with it well, but uh, you'll get to see what we did. <laughs> so starting with the dwarves deployment, uh, barely touching that forest, which is a fungus forest, we have a unit of 30 longbeards with full command and shields. Next to them is a unit of 30 hammers with full command and the rune of Groth one eye. Also there is his thane BSB, who has the master rune of Grungi and a shield. Then he has a unit of 30 Iron Breakers with full command, and with him, with them is his Lord on an Oath Stone with shield. Uh, he's got a full load, but it's not going to matter <laughs> in a minute. Uh, he also has a Rune Smith with the Rune of Spell Breaking times two, a shield and a Rune of Stone. Next to that is another unit of Longbeards with full command and great weapon. That's 30 man strong. And then he has a Gyrocopter with Vanguard next to that. Um, and then up here on the hill, he has two cannons. The one on the right has the Rune of Forging and the Rune of Burning on it. The one on the left has the, just has the Rune of Forging. In front of them is an organ gun with no runes and a Master Engineer with a great weapon. So on the Ogre side, I start off with six Lead Belchers. They have a Bellower with them. Next to that is my unit of six man-eaters with full command. They have the banner of eternal flame and they have poison attacks and swift stride uh, for their rules and they each have an ogre pistol on them. Then I've got a unit of nine ogre bulls with full command and with them is a butcher level two to the lore of beasts with the hell heart. Next to that is a unit of seven Iron Guts. With them is my Slaughtermaster, who is my general, level four with the combat build I've been doing recently to the Lore of the Great Maw. And my Bruiser BSB with the Dragonhide banner, which I totally forgot to use, or maybe I didn't have a chance to use it, I don't remember. Uh, next to that is a unit of nine Ogre Bulls with my second Butcher, who's level two to the Lore of Heavens and has a Dispel Scroll. Then I have an Iron Blaster in the back, a unit of three Yetis next to that, and up front I have two Saber Tusks. And over here you can see I have one more Saber Tusk hiding on the other side of the building. My ultimate plan with those three is just run them to that War Machine Hill as soon as I can to kind of tie things up and have the Yetis follow them. I'm trying to give enough space so that the Yetis don't get too close to the Saber Tusks uh, and have to panic in case he shoots any so that's why the yetis are a little further back um but i'm really afraid of that war machine hill and i need to do something to deal with it and here you just see where he's vanguarded the gyrocopter up front to use as some chaff and redirectors so it does seem like michael is learning some lessons from the last couple of games we played together which is definitely good to see so, like I said, we weren't sure how to deal with this thing in the middle, so Michael gets the first turn, and he decides he's going to move up his two center units close enough to the Leprechaun building uh, to start racking those points. His plan is to rack them up early and then kind of back them off and, and sort of play back and forth with his four units so that he's getting like 200 victory points a turn and hopefully just outlast me that way. Um, so we'll have to see how that works out, because I have no idea whether it's good to go for those points or not. Um, you can see up here he moved the gyrocopter up to chaff the, uh, 
big iron gut unit. But uh, during shooting, he ends up landing, I think it's a cannonball he lands in this mid unit, ends up killing, uh, and or maybe it was, he might have shot with a gyrocopter. Either case, he kills one iron gut here, which is definitely not what I want to have happen top of one. However, this is even worse. He ends up zeroing the other cannon in on my iron blaster, hits it, wounds it, does six wounds, and blows it right the heck off the table. And then to make matters worse, one of my saber tusks and the unit of yetis decided they don't want to go deal with that war machine hill and panic and run off the table. So yeah, he has collected a bunch of points top of turn one and pretty much messed up my whole right flank and my ability to get to his war machines which is just not good in any way shape or form and last but not least he unleashes the organ gun on my right hand side ogres kills one ogre and puts two wounds on a second one so uh, <laughs> him getting first turn was just awesome for him but he's done a stupid amount of damage to me at this point but luckily for me, the Leprechaun decided to wreak vengeance on my behalf, ends up taking two ranks of hammerers away, and I think a little over two ranks of the Iron Breakers. Uh, he just rolled absolutely terribly, and they were just eaten. So he's gotten 200 points, but he's probably lost that in Dwarves at this point. Um, so he's he's like... I need to get him out of the way, but he's going to be subject to it one more time on my turn before he's going to be able to get out. So top of my turn, I charge the Iron Guts at the Gyrocopter, it flees, and then I charge it with the left hand unit of Bulls and it flees to where you see it there, and then we fail both charges with twos. Um, so I don't even get close enough where I'm triggering the Leprechaun, and uh, that's just terrible, um, but that's where you see me end up at the end of the charges. Uh, up here, I move all my shooting on top of the hill. I really want to do some damage to some of his units before I get in there. Um, and frankly, if I can ping off more of those hammers, I mean, the, the spell from the Leprechaun did a lot. If I can basically make them a not issue, I'm, I'm thinking I've got that side pretty well held, held down, because I'm not really all that concerned about the 30-man... Uh, long beard unit with shields. They just aren't going to be able to do enough to, to take me out, I don't think. Uh, then over here, I end up just moving the other ogre unit a little bit up so that I can cast... I have debuffs on his war machines from the Heaven's Mage there, uh, so I think that's what I'm going to try, because I really don't want to just get shot over and over and over again. But my shooting and magic are garbage, so we end the turn. He collects 200 more points, but strips better than another rank of hammerers off, better than another rank of ironbreakers off, and loses his general to that final trans. Um, so he's lost easily well more than he's gained at this point, and he's thinking he needs to back the hell away from that <laughs> leprechaun's house, and and now I'm I'm frankly afraid to go near it. So, on his turn, you see he just starts backing everything off. Um, he does rally the gyrocopter, so he's got no choice but to have it be targeted, um, but he's pulling everything back. Which means he's not going to get any points this turn, but he's already gotten four, 400 points from that, and hasn't lost anything but his general. So he's still up because he took out the iron blaster and all of that crap on the right-hand side. So, he's still doing pretty good at this point. Um, over here, even with, I think I did get Ice Shard Blizzard off on his organ gun, but even with that, he's got more than enough firepower to blow the kitty that was coming for that hill to Kingdom Come. Then he's going to send another cannonball into this ogre unit and take off two of them with very little trouble. His shooting is definitely on key this game, and uh, with me not wanting to go near the the center leprechaun tower I just I don't know what I can do about it um, I don't think I have the movement to get over to the hill with any of my big blocks without catching flank attacks or something from those middle warriors 
Uh, but on my turn, I do go ahead and get a charge off with the cat into the organ gun. Uh, it's only one cat, but I've had luck with that before. Um, so if my dice hold out, maybe I'll be in good shape. But my dice are not particularly friendly to me this game. <laughs> So you can see here, I'm trying to get aggressive. Uh, I think I tried charging the ogre unit into his uh, iron or his warriors there on the side just to to get him in there and start killing something, but it was a long bomb charge. I needed a 10 or 11, and I failed it. Uh, I think I failed the charge with the iron guts too. But now they're within the range of the six inches for the leprechaun tower. Uh, I may have. I think I did uh, try to charge the gyrocopter and failed that too, so I, I'm just not rolling well at all for charges. Uh, then over here I decided to bring the range guys a little closer, hoping to get less penalties and to do some more damage. Um, maybe get into a position where I can char isolate and charge a unit with both the man-eaters and the lead belchers, because they can get the job done if I can hit one of these units, but I'm just not rolling for crap on my charge distances, and it's definitely hurting me. Uh, then over here, I don't manage to hurt, because my magic's nothing. I've got no shooting, or no shooting that's accomplishing anything other than peeling a, a model or two off at a time. <coughs> uh, so in combat here, my cat does nothing and takes a wound for his trouble from the uh, crew. Uh, we're tied so nobody goes anywhere. And then it actually looks like both of those units were close enough for final trans, which I roll like garbage. I lose one ogre out of the right hand unit and three iron guts out of the center unit. So now the bigger problem about that is that I don't have enough models in that center unit to give me lookout sirs anymore. I do have a lookout noblar, but I only have two rank and file and a champion in there. So he can pick me off at his leisure at this point. Um, so he charges, so we go into his turn, he charges his warriors at my lead belchers. They choose to flee rather than essentially accept a fight on his terms, which I don't know. I, I, I don't know if this was the right answer. I, I don't think I'm playing very well this game. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm just I'm making decisions that don't make any sense to me now that I'm looking back on it. Uh, he also charges his warriors at these ogres, and again, I flee. I think my plan was to kind of make him come out and get within the area of the l leprechaun thing and weaken him up, and then I can attack him. Uh, the other plus side is this gets my ogres out of the area of the leprechaun thing before it goes off this turn. So I'm thinking that might be what my strategy was. Um, then he he did try to redirect his charge over here into my man-eaters, but you can see he I stood and shot, and I think I peeled off two guys from the stand-and-shoot. And then over here, you see that he's failed his charge, not surprisingly, with these guys. But he rolled really high, so he was, like, he needed a... I think he needed an 11 and rolled a 9, something like that. So he goes up 6 inches, which I'm thinking, if I can not get blown to Kingdom Come, I can counterattack with my Iron Guts and, and maybe do some major damage to that unit, but we'll have to see. And then for the rest of his movement, he just takes those two other half-broken units and moves them to the side a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure whether he's planning on having them follow the other big bricks around, but we'll see. So I get super lucky here. Uh, his organ gun can't shoot because it's in combat. The one cannon fails to hit my iron gut unit. The other one only manages to brush the front uh, so it only wounds the one guy and kills him, but none of my characters get hurt, but now one of them, my BSB, has to go to the front rank because I don't have that many dudes left at this point. Uh, and then during close combat, the cat, who absolutely fails, uh, just gets beat to death by the dwarves protecting the organ gun. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm rolling like balls. And it doesn't help that I'm playing, like, as, as Lord Tremendous would say, I'm sitting on my shoulders, 
So my tactics aren't are terrible. My dice are terrible. It's just being a, a rotten game at this point. And then on top of everything, at the end of the turn, Final Trans goes off and kills both my BSB and the banner of the Iron Guts who has the standard of discipline on him. So I went from leadership 9 with a reroll to leadership 8 with no reroll. But luckily, I don't panic. But this is just absolutely terrible. So then on my turn, this ogre unit charges the gyrocopter who flees and ends up where you see him. They redirect into the warriors there. Then the man-eaters charge the gyrocopter who chooses not to flee, so they connect barely on the corner there. And I manage to rally my lead belchers. Then on this side of things, I manage to rally my uh, ogre unit. And I decide to just have my general bail out of the one man remaining Iron Gut unit and come hang out with this Ogre unit, since I still get uh, Lookout Sirs for that unit. He, he won't be able to pick me off as readily. And now that I have no fortitude in that Iron Gut unit, so I'm not getting the extra points for it, I back it away from the uh, the Leprechaun. So over here, obviously the Iron Guts totally crush the, or not Iron Guts, I'm sorry, the Maneaters, totally crush the Gyrocopter and reform here. And then over here I put some pretty significant hurt on the Warriors, uh, but I do lose an Ogre for my trouble uh, because he's got more static than me. I think we tied or I won barely, but he's not going anywhere. And then here, the final Trans Leprechaun at the end of the turn catches this unit and kills half of them. Um, it's, we've really just been terrible rolling in general, but he's still ranking up, racking up some points, and from the look of it, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get a large enough unit over there on the last turn to catch that 300-point bonus either. So it may be worth it, uh, particularly since I'm taking such a beating from his artillery. Uh, so we go into the dwarf turn. He actually does decide he's going to move up the iron breakers closer to the building, uh, so that I I don't think he's putting them in the range of it yet, but I think he wants them poised there because they still have an, enough men to be models to be higher than any unit I've got. So I think he's poised to rush them in on the last turn to snag up those three hundred points. Um. And he does basically the same thing with the hammers here, uh, but I think he just moves them to the side a little bit, so if I were to break those dwarves, I'm not going to overrun into the hammer unit. So then he does some more shooting and kills one more of the ogres, which takes away my ability to do lookout sirs, and the following cannons blow away my general and another ogre out of the unit and does two wounds to a third ogre. And then over here in combat, I'm still slowly beating down this uh, dwarf unit, but I lose another ogre for my troubles. Uh, we're kind of sitting here just grinding on each other at this point. I think I'll eventually win it, but my dice are rolling so bad that it's going to be a very, very slow process. And we don't have that many turns left, so I, I need something to change ASAP. So we go into my turn, uh, I decide to go ahead and charge these ogres into the weakened longbeards, because I figure if I'm going to get any points, this is as close as I'm going to be able to get to it. Uh, I then fail the charge with the one remaining iron gut to get in there, and I think he ends up stopping within six inches of the leprechaun building, so with the way I've been rolling, I'm fully expecting him to die a horrible freaking death. And over here you see I've moved the, the range guys up around to try and get to the hammers. But during magic I managed to get Wisson's Wild Form off on this ogre unit, which was just enough to be able to uh, finish off the, the Longbeard unit, which is what I needed to do. And I reformed like this so that my barest tip corner is within the aura effect of the uh, Leprechaun, because I need to start gathering up some more of those extra points. Over here, I do basically nothing to that iron or the longbeard unit over here. They manage to kill one of my ogres and put another wound on another one. So I'm needing 
needing something very low. I think I was needing a five to rally or to stay here, and I ended up sticking by just random luck. And then over here, I during uh, the tra final trans section, I lose two more of these ogres to final trans. But again, I'm rolling pretty well on my leadership, and they're not going to panic. Actually, I am a total liar. Um, they do panic from that and turn and run. They don't run far, though. They're actually, because of the way the, the sliding works, they're actually at the front of this movement tray up on the hill, but they keep sliding back. So yeah, that, that sucked. They're fleeing. So really, the only thing I've got within range to do much of anything at this point is that man-eater unit. And then on his turn, my opponent decides that he, rather than let me come to him, he's going to come bring the business to the man-eaters and charges his hammers with the BSB into them. Uh, I think this is a crucial mistake on my opponent's part. Um, those man-eaters don't have great weapons. There's a lot of attacks in there. Even with him challenging out the champion with his BSB, I'm going to eat that hammer unit alive. There's just not enough bodies for them to take what I can dish out. Uh, over here, he brings the Iron Breakers a little closer to this fight, because he's still worried I'll kill his Longbeards, and he wants to counterattack. And if that does happen, and he does counter, like, come in after me, uh, I, I don't think two Ogres and a Butcher is going to do much. So during his shooting, he ends up landing... He shoots both cannons at this unit of Lead Belchers, and rolls terribly and only hits one of them and but he kills it uh, but that is not enough to trigger a panic so they're still alright where they are so we go into close combat uh, I end up doing a decent amount of damage to him but he finishes off one of the ogres and puts two wounds on the champion uh, so yeah that could have gone a lot better at this point I'm I'm thinking my opponent has it, and he's just cleaning up for extra points, so I'm trying to shift my mind into let me get as many points as I possibly can mode, which is harder to do when you're you're prepping for a tournament like Brawlers. Uh, and then over here in combat, like I said, he put two wounds on my champion, but the Maneaters just ate that hammer unit. His BSB was all that was left. His BSB needed double ones, re-rollable, and didn't, and exploded. So that was a lot of big boost points there, and now I've turned to face inward. Uh, I want to get to that other unit of Iron Breakers before he shoots me to death with the gun. And, uh... I guess this is... Were we? I don't remember why. This might have been another turn of combat. I might have forgotten to take a movement picture. I think I did. I think this is combat on his turn six. So, yeah. Yeah, he ends up beating me bad here. The butcher's all that's left, and she breaks, and he runs me down. So, uh, yeah, I guess this is just showing where he had moved. Maybe I had done that out of order. I think I'd done that out of it. That might have been combat from that last turn. Any rate, he's going to turn around and move here on his turn six. It puts him within uh, range to get final trans, but he wants to hopefully get the plus 300 points because he's got a bunch of guys there. Um, and over here, he ends up uh, in his shooting phase just absolutely butchering the Lead Belchers, they take two more wounds worth of guys, and they turn and break. And then he opens up with the organ gun on my man-eaters, and kills two more of the man-eaters with organ gun shots. So, at this point, I don't have the models against him, so my hope is I'll just let him get final trans, and then try and make a long bomb charge and just finish that unit off. Because if I can do that, then I'll have a four-man unit nearby with fortitude that'll get the bonus, and he won't. So that's my only plan at this point. Uh, this just shows where his champion ended up after having run down my, uh, my butcher. And he is just like, I'm getting out of here. Go hide in the forest or something. <laughs> So he did lose a bunch of guys to final trans again, but he got the points for it that turn. 
and on my six, I end up making the long bomb charge with the man-eaters, slamming him right in the face, and I think there's only, what is that, one, two, three, four, five uh, iron breakers and a rune lord left, so I'm pretty confident that the man-eaters are going to get the job done here and finish things off for me, so I was very happy to have made that charge. Over here, however, the lead belchers do not rally, so they continue fleeing. Uh, they don't go off the board, but with Brawler's Bash rules, any unit that is fleeing at the end of the game gives up half its points to my opponent. And this is just a better shot to show where exactly on the board this is occurring. We are right near that Leprechaun building, so... Uh, it's theoretically possible that I could kill him and then lose the unit and not get any of these points. But at this point, it's a risk I've got to take. And then during combat, I do absolutely destroy face on this unit. Uh, I annihilated him to a man, so I get the points for that. And then during final trans, I lose nobody out of the man-eaters, so I get 100 for being there at the end of the turn, and another 300 for having the largest unit with fortitude within the range of it at the end of the game. So major point swing in the last turn. And this just goes to show what the uh, battlefield looked like. And as you can see, the only thing the dwarves have left on the board is their War Machine Hill. And I've got a decent amount on the board, uh, but I he was around that building for a long time, so we're not quite sure how the points are going to break out, so we definitely have to calculate it up. So, after we totaled it up, Ogre Kingdoms had 3475, the Dwarves had 3047, so it is a victory to the Ogre Kingdoms. Um, I have no idea how the hell I won this game. Um, it really was just sort of getting my opponent making sort of one bad call at the end of the, the, the game, charging those hammers into my man-eaters when he, he really should not have, have done that. Uh, but I was playing terribly and the dice luck was against me. It was really that sort of last turn reversal of fortunes as, as far as me picking up those points. And I wouldn't have done nearly that well if it weren't for the scenario where my opponent basically got final transed right off the board. So, um, this is a really screwed up scenario, by the way. Let me just go ahead and say that. Um, I have no idea what they're trying to aim for here. But the problem is, with my list as it stands right now, I have too big of a footprint to kind of just hide in a corner and, and avoid this thing, because it's going to be in the dead center of the board. So I'm not, I still don't know how the hell I'm going to deal with this. I can't, I can't imagine that I'm going to have too many opponents who are going to just run up on the thing like Michael did. Um, but to be honest, I don't know if that was necessarily even a bad thing. He just got really unlucky with how many rolls he did. But if he could have, like, snuck some units up there and got some points, that, that could have made a difference. I mean, in fact, he had gotten... I got the bonus 300, and I only scored 900 points off of the thing. And just from where he was, he had scored 900 points off the thing. So, um... Maybe with some additional units or, or something, you could definitely make use of the points you could squeeze from that, but Final Trance is a rough spell just to eat in the face with no defenses against it. Um, but all in all, I don't like this list. Uh, I, I mentioned it on the show the other night, but... I think I'm kind of back to square one. I've got some other ideas, but uh, this is definitely not the list I'm going to take to Brawlers. I don't like not having a Tyrant. Um, to be honest, I think because I only own one Iron Blaster, it might be better off for me not to bring any. Because they're not really going to... Having one, as Anthony from Sustainable Center says, is, is like having none. And if I'm if it's going to be effectively having none, I might as well just say leave them the hell at home and bring more bodies or or something else tricky. Uh, but I'm just I'm kind of going back to the beginning on this one. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of nervous because I've only got a little over a week at the time I'm recording this before the list for brawlers has to be in. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up rushing 
and not making a good list and, and getting my teeth kicked in. But I was kind of expecting to get my teeth kicked in anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that part. I just, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I think I need to, I'm getting burned out on the ogres. I think after this tournament, I'm going to let the fat boys rest for a little bit and mess with some of my other armies. Maybe that will get my brain working right again. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, any anyway, rate, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, or heck, even ideas, um, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time.